Hello everybody, welcome to video four for unit three. So today we're gonna to talk about the mean value theorem or the MVT for short. We use this quite a bit in calculus. I'd say it shows up almost every year on the AP exam. It's a big idea. Um, and it talks about how to find certain values uh, for tangent lines along your curve using given information. Um, but to start, we have to do deal with something called Rolle's Theorem. And so let's take a look at Rolle's Theorem. So Rolle's Theorem basically says this, guys. This, is, this looks a lot more intimidating than it is. Take a look at this. Let's say that I have an interval, so from A to B, and I am going to look at the value of f of a, and what I am telling you specifically is that what I get when I plug in a is the same thing I get when I plug in b. So basically their y values, guys, are the same. So what this is saying is that if that's, if that's true, if what you get when you plug in a is the same thing as what you get when you plug in b, and it's continuous, that is a very, very important piece of the puzzle. If your graph is continuous, then basically what that means is it's got to be able to get from here to the other point. Now, it could look like I have it here, or let's do another example. It could look like this, right, perhaps. Um, it could also just be a straight line across. What Rolle's theorem says is that at least somewhere along the way, somewhere, some C value in between these two, so an X value that's somewhere between A and B, we're calling it C, has to be zero. The slope, the derivative of that has to be zero. Well, let's look. Up here, in this top one, I've got a place where my slope is zero. See it? Because I went up and I came down right here, my slope would be zero along the way. Technically, it's also zero here, but it's just guaranteeing that there's at least one. Let's look at my graph over here. Over here, when I went to connect along the way, there was a place here where it was zero and maybe even there. We're not sure, but there's definitely at least one. Now, what if you just went straight across? Well, if you went straight across, think about it, guys. This whole time your slope is zero, so there would be infinite places along the way where your slope is zero. Um, the reason the continuity is so important is let's just say it wasn't continuous. Well, then I might do something like this. And then I could stop and I could start down here and go back up. There might be nowhere along this area where my slope is zero because I'm not required to like go up and come back down and so on and so forth. So it, being continuous is very important. Okay, so let's try Rolle's theorem. So in this first example, here's my function. And I want you to show that f satisfies Rolle's theorem on the interval from 1 to 4, and then find those c values um, where the derivative of c is 0. Okay, so first of all, I have to figure out what I get on the ends. So I'm going to plug in 1 and 4, and notice, yep, I do get that they're the same value. So if they're the same, there must be a place along the way where it's 0. So, okay, let's start by doing this. I'm going to actually find the derivative of this function, which isn't that bad, 8x minus 20. And then I'm going to find this c value. Now, technically, guys, you could solve for x, but because they ask you to find c, I really should put c into the problem, but it's the same thing as an x. So I'm looking for when the derivative is 0. All you have to do is solve it. I get 8c equals positive 20. Divide both sides by 8 and reduce, and I've got 10 fourths, or reduce that again, 5 halves, 2.5. So when c is 2.5 or 5 halves, I would have the slope be 0. Okay. Now, let's move on to the mean value theorem. So mean value theorem says something a little different because let's go back to Rolle's real quick. Rolle says that the ends have to be exactly the same, right? But that's not reality. Reality is more than likely what you get on this end is not going to be the same thing that you get on that end. So what if I don't have the same thing on both, end, both ends? So here we go. So here I have a y value that is wildly different than the y value on the other end. So for this one, once again, we're saying, well, if it's continuous on an interval, 
then there has to be a place along the way that, well, let's look at what we see. Notice the slope between A and B here. See this line? This is called a secant line. A secant line is just a line that hits my graph in at least two places. Typically, it's just two because I'm looking at an interval. You've probably heard about that with a circle before in geometry. So this secant line has a slope, right? If your graph is continuous from A to B, then there has to be some way to connect them. What I'm telling you is then there has to be a place, not that the slope is zero, guys, but that the slope is the same as the secant line. So what I'm saying is it's the same as the slope between these two points. So whatever this slope ends up being of this orange line, there must be a place where that has the same slope for the tangent line or for the derivative. Again, my points could be met in a very different way. Like, perhaps I have something that looks like this. Here's my little line that connects them. Is there a place where I have that same slope? Well, again, remember, same slope means they're parallel. So I'm kind of looking for parallel lines I could draw. Well, let's see. Here's that line. Is there another place where I could draw a line that goes through my graph that's parallel? Yeah. In fact, for this one that I did, it looks like there's three different values where it would have that same slope. So again, it just exists. It, ha it exists that there's another place, but sometimes there's multiple places. And that's what the mean value theorem says. Mean meaning average. You're kind of, that's what you're finding basically here. So your average value has to be between these two values has to exist somewhere along there as well. So let's see it in action. So it's like roles, except they don't have to be the same thing on both ends. So here's my f of x. I'm going to show that the hypothesis of the MVT, mean value theorem, exists on negative 1 to 4 as an interval. And we're, then we're going to find that number c that satisfies. So first thing I have to do, plug in my endpoints, see what I get. So when I plug in negative 1, I get 1.25. You can do that separately. When I plug in 4, I end up with 5. So here's the thing, guys. The first thing that I need to do, here's negative 1, here's maybe 4. The first thing I have to do is find the slope between them. And to get the slope, I'm going to have to do it old school. So like y minus y value over x minus x. And yes, we do have to do the larger x value first minus the other. So in this one, for example, I end up with 3.75 over 5. Do this by hand. You could change this back into a fraction. That is a fraction is 15 fourths over 5, which ends up being 3 fourths. So we're looking for a place where our slope is 3 fourths. Well, if I want to get an equation for slope in general, then I need the derivative, guys. So I'm looking for when my slope or my derivative is 3 fourths. So first thing I have to do is find the derivative of my function. So the derivative of f is, bring that 2 out front, 2 fourths or 1 half x. Not too difficult. So again, I want to know when this is equal to 3 fourths. But again, technically I'm, I'm calling it c, so I'm going to write 1 half c equals 3 fourths. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 over 1, and I end up with 6 fourths or 3 halves or 1.5. So when c is 1.5, I would have the same slope from the endpoints. So again, it is important to say somewhere along the way that f of x is continuous. And how do I know that? Well, this is a polynomial. There's no places where it's discontinuous. So f of x is continuous, so therefore there exists a c value, and that c value is 1.5. All right. Let's take a look at our third example. Same stuff. Um, I want to show that it satisfies the hypothesis of MVT. So first, this time, let's do this first. Let's say that f of x is continuous on the interval 1 to 5. That's important. If it wasn't continuous, we couldn't say these things. All right, now we need to find the slope between the original values. So I'm going to do my y minus my y over my x minus my x. So I end up with 68 over 4, and that's 17. Okay, so that means somewhere along the way, from 1 to 5, there must be a C value where the slope is 17. Remember, this is the slope. So to find the slope of the equation or the curve, I'm going to actually do the derivative. So I get 6x minus 1 
And once again, I'm looking for this C value, so I'm going to input the C now, set it equal to 17, and solve. Comes out real nice for us in this one. Okay. In example four, um, they give it to us a little bit differently. They say, let f be a function where the first derivative is given, and they say that it's true for anything bigger than zero. That's important. Um, it's known that at f of 1, I'm 9. At f of 3, I'm 11. What value of x in the open interval from 1 to 3 satisfies the mean value theorem? Okay, once again, it has to be continuous. We know it is because we said the derivative exists, so that's good. That means it's continuous. Um, all right, uh, well, first we need the slope between 1 and 3. So again, they gave us the following information. So let's first find the slope y minus y over x minus x. So I'm looking for a slope of 1. That's nice. Now we've got to find our derivative. Well, the good news, they already gave you the derivative. So the derivative, and again, I'm going to go ahead and plug in. I guess in this one, they, they do let you solve for x, so we can keep it an x. And we need to know when this is equal to the slope of the endpoints. So I'm going to set that equal to the slope of my endpoints and solve. I'm going to solve by multiplying by the denominator. So I get 1x squared on the right. I'm going to bring my x terms to one side. And I'm going to take my non-x terms to the other. Go ahead and divide by that 2 and square root. Now guys, technically you get plus or minus root 3, but your only answer is root 3. Why? Well, remember, we're looking for values between 1 and 3, and negative root 3 wouldn't exist there. So root 3 is the only one that satisfies that interval. Okay. All right, so good luck with the problem sets. I'll see you in class, and we'll clear some of those issues you might have along the way.